Um, so what is anorexia nervosa? Is it just refusal to eat, or are there other diagnostic criteria that have to be met? Yeah, so an anorexia nervosa is an eating disorder. Actually, when we talk about eating disorders, we'll be talking about anorexia nervosa, and we'll be talking about bulimia nervosa. There are two other eating disorders, too, binge eating disorder and uh, avoided restrictive eating disorder. But we'll be focusing on anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. So anorexia nervosa is an eating disorder that's associated with a disturbed body image, a, uh, a, the sense that one, one feels that uh, she's overweight or, uh, or and could be very overweight when she's underweight. Um, so there's that body image distortion. There's a weight loss. And, Generally, it's recommended that it be somewhere around 85% to 90% of ideal body weight, at least. Um, and there's a, 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 an intense fear of becoming overweight. So there's this persistent restrictive eating out of fear that if they eat more, they'll just keep eating and they'll gain a great deal of weight. So that's the difference between anorexia and anorexia nervosa, where anorexia refers to um, res a, a, a loss of appetite. This is really, one may have some loss of appetite, but this is about uh, a, a real fear of continually eating. So you restrict out of that fear. And so in common parlance, and you made an interesting um, distinction between anorexia and anorexia nervosa, but in common parlance, people tend to just say anorexia, and they mean anorexia nervosa. Correct. Um, so sort of what warning, or how would you recommend, um, certainly for student people who are studying this, uh, to, to approach? Uh, well, well in, the, in the common you know, vernacular, again, you know, I think anorexia does refer to anorexia nervosa. So, uh, but I, I'm thinking more in the... In the uh, in the medical world, that anorexia will frequently refer to a loss of a appetite, uh, 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 and so I, I think it's fine to either use anorexia or anorexia nervosa. The other thing I, I think one needs to be aware of with anorexia nervosa, and we'll also see it with bulimia nervosa, is this preoccupation with body weight and shape. So the thinking about food, uh, body shape, uh, dominates one's life. And that's common to both disorders. Now, in anorexia nervosa, one may have uh, certain medical issues associated with the weight loss, such as, for since 90% of the individuals with anorexia are girls, um, they may have loss of menses, loss of periods. Um, uh, but they may not. They may continue to menstruate, and they would still meet the criteria for anorexia nervosa. And so that brings me to another question. Where you Anorexia nervosa is often portrayed as a disorder of young women. Um, and I noticed in, when earlier you gave an example, you actually said she. So can you talk a little bit about the prevalence of it, um, what populations are affected more than others? And so an anorexia nervosa is not a common disorder. A disordered eating is actually common, but anorexia nervosa is, probably occurs in somewhere around 0.5% of women of women, girls and young, and young women. Um, the, the, uh, and probably somewhere around 9 and 10 are female. So uh, the boys are pretty uncommon. There's some thinking that they may be, there may be an increasing number of boys and it may be a little harder for boys to, pres to actually present themselves with this condition. So, but generally it's a female disorder. There are sub certain subgroups that are at higher risk. So um, those that are involved with activities that focus a great deal on body habitus, particularly on, on thinness, um, such as uh, ballet, um, uh, gymnastics, um, the uh, sometimes figure skating, um, the uh, um, for boys, wrestling. Um, the, there's even some thinking that it's somewhat increased amongst jockeys, although I don't haven't seen that many jockeys. But uh, uh, but those are groups that are somewhat higher risk. But the the important thing within those groups are that it's generally the more elite, the more competitive the activity, uh, uh, the the higher 
the, or the greater the risk for the development of an eating disorder. So that for run-of-the-mill ballet that most of our kids would be in, um, it's not so much of a risk factor. But as you move up the ladder, and uh, there's a greater demand for a precise kind of body image or, or body uh, habitus to meet the choreography of the uh, ballet company, um, the, uh, the risk becomes greater. And when does anorexia nervosa begin? At uh, what age? And um, what are some of the, you started talking about things like um, absence of menses that you know, may or may not be the case. What are some of the medical and, and psychological conditions that can lead to um, eating disorders in general and um, anorexia? So, so um, anorexia nervosa, the age of onset of anorexia nervosa is generally uh, what we call bimodal at two points in time, one around puberty. And uh, puberty continues to get earlier and earlier. Uh, but, uh, but around puberty, around the body changes and the hormonal changes that occur at that time. Uh, and then somewhere around 17 or 18, when uh, uh, these individuals frequently move away from home. And uh, uh, so th those are, are the, uh, the two common, most common times for the onset of these disorders. They're, they're, it's pretty frequent that, that there's an anxiety disorder that precedes the, uh, the anorexia. Or at least um, one is, tends to be more obsessional, more perfectionistic, uh, more harm avoidant. Uh, th those temperament features seem to be present um, and, and can be associated with, with anxiety, with increased anxiety. Mood disorders can also uh, predate the onset of, a, uh, of anorexia nervosa. Uh, in particular, depression. So one needs to be aware of that. Um, okay. in, in terms of the medical condition <coughs> that could be associated with these disorders, or that at times associated with these disorders, diabetes mellitus. Um, the, in, other, in other words, the disorders that have to do with uh, um, both regulation of intake and. Uh, um, uh, um, that, 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 that you can, uh, that challenge your control over your intake um, can put one at greater risk. So diabetes mellitus is, is one. Another condition uh, is, is uh, inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease. Um, again, where uh, there, there's a uh, uh, one has to be careful, attentive to, to nutrition. Cystic fibrosis, again, may be another condition where, where you may run some risk for eating, eating disorders, although it's not that common. But again, nutrition, another key factor in it. Uh, um, so those, those are some disorders one needs to be thinking about. And so what about on the other side of it? Are there some disorders that maybe don't predate the, or medical conditions, psychological or um, physical that don't exist before the eating disorder, before anorexia nervosa, but then arise as a result of... But, but let me comment once more about even the before the eating disorder, is that the, the anorexia may start around uh, a concern around one's body image, and that may be as a result of someone making a comment that someone looks too chubby. Um, you know, uh, that, 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 that may not mean that the person necessarily is right. chubby or very chubby or whatever, however one would like to describe it. But, but someone makes a comment, a critical comment, or is perceived as a critical comment, and, uh, uh, and then begins to uh, restrict. Um, uh, can, sometimes it can come even as a result of other activities like bullying, and so one, one needs to be aware of that as well. Then in terms of the conditions that can follow the onset of anorexia nervosa, 
both the psychological conditions as well as the medical conditions. So depression is not uncommon. It, it, it commonly coexists with the anorexia, and it may predate it, but it also may follow it. Um, it's similarly, uh, um, obsessive compulsive disorders or, and other anxiety disorders, so, social anxiety disorder, can can uh, predate it, but can also coexist with the uh, with anorexia nervosa. In terms of the medical conditions, so depending upon the degree of starvation and the degree of weight loss, bradycardia, which is a low heart rate, is quite common. Now, a number of these individuals with anorexia nervosa may be chronic exercisers, so they may be involved in certain sports or activities, so they may maintain a moderate heart rate, but if the heart rate begins to fall, um, and that's not uncommon, uh, that would be uh, uh, very consistent with anorexia nervosa. Hypothermia, which, which is a drop in your uh, temperature, um, a drop in your blood pressure would be another. Um, bone de loss of bone density, a big concern, um, associated with loss of estrogen with, or with low estrogen, um, the, maybe with the anxieties, um, uh, but the, uh, that, that, uh, and that bone loss can actually ultimately lead to fractures, so one needs to be quite attentive to that, and, and, and that needs to be monitored. Can somebody have anorexia nervosa and be overweight? Well, the question about anorexia nervosa and 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 and, and actual weight is is a, a subject of considerable de debate. So that if someone's uh, seriously overweight and loses weight, um, may still be overweight, may be normal weight. Um, but is, again, obsessed with one's body shape and weight, um, tremendously fearful about taking in food. All that is consistent with uh, the diagnosis of anorexia nervosa. That being said, however, anorexia nervosa is generally thought of as a, a disorder of low weight. And uh, so that studies of anorexia nervosa, and particularly treatment studies of anorexia nervosa and so forth, would involve individuals who are of low body weight, would not be of, uh, individuals of normal weight or, uh, or, or, or greater than normal weight. Right. And then we, can we expand a little bit on, uh, I know you've, you have this long, long term longitudinal study that's uh, running. Uh, what are some of the major findings from that NIH-funded work? Um, and then maybe talk about, based on your, your findings there, what are some of the more, what might be more effective treatment approaches for NIH? Well, let me, let me say about the longitudinal study. So we've been involved in a study that's now in the 25th year of uh, following 246 women with anorexia nervosa and bulimia nervosa. Uh, that have been uh, followed on a uh, regular basis and closely, at least for the first 10 years, and now there's a follow-up at 25 years. Um, and what we found is that uh, uh, most uh, women with anorexia nervosa will improve over time. Um, the the uh, recovery rate is probably somewhere around 50%, could be a little bit more, but most will improve, uh, even if they don't fully recover. Um, so that's good news. And not only that, they continue to recover, so that even if you're not recovered at 10 years, you may be recovered at 20 years. So that uh, it's not like, well, if you haven't gotten well now, you, it's never going to work. People continue to get better, and they actually recover. And that people who and I think it's important to know that people actually do fully recover. There are others who, again, are substantially improved who may be so-called in recovery, okay? Um, but there are individuals who actually are truly recovered. That's the good news. The not so good news is that uh, 
And maybe it's not so good that only 50% truly recover, because we would like everybody to recover. So let me be clear about that. But the, 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 the mortality rate is extraordinarily high. So in the first 20 years of the study, um, 14 of the women with anorexia nervosa, and, the, and there were uh, 136 women with, with uh, anorexia nervosa, but 14 of the women with anorexia nervosa died. That's an ext extremely high rate. These are young women. And the suicide rate was alarmingly high. Um, so uh, this is a serious condition that really merits early intervention. Um, it was not a treatment study. It was called a, it's a, called a naturalistic design. So we recorded all the treatment people received, but it wasn't that they had to participate in a treatment program. As a matter of fact, if they chose not to receive treatment or they dropped out of treatment after a few sessions, we continued to follow them because we wanted to learn. The uh, um, treatment helps, okay, first of all. Psychotherapy helps. Um, uh, the, the, uh, but, uh, but I think it's important to note that it, it, we need to learn more about treatment, the treatments of these, uh, the treatment of this condition, um, and we need to know even learn more about specific facets of psychotherapy, and for whom, what, so that there, are the individuals who don't seem to respond as well to treatment. And why don't they respond as well? And are there other treatments that may be more useful for that group? Pharmacotherapy, medication, which is has always been the wish of a lot of people that we could sort of that there was a magic bullet that we could sort of give an antibiotic and this would all go away. Um, there does not seem to be a magic bullet in either the pharmacotherapy or uh, the psychotherapy realm here. Um, and, and, and medication, even though there is no proven medication for anorexia nervosa, uh, um, medications are actually used very commonly. And, and that may be because the, 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 the studies of medication, uh, the, the, the outcome measure may be different than, uh, than what than what we maybe should be, what, than what we should be looking at. So, for example, it may not reverse anorexia nervosa. The medication doesn't appear to be medications like the antidepressants that are commonly used in uh, in anorexia nervosa, but it may help people feel a little bit better, so they're able to continue in their treatment. And if that be the case, that could be very useful. So, I think those are things that that need to be thought about.